quarters was decimated. Now the B ring is just second in from the inner courtyard. It's a whole ring in from the C ring. And we've already seen there were dead bodies and damage in the A ring as well, just inside the courtyard. The B ring between fourth and fifth quarters was decimated. The heat was so intense it couldn't go in. Marine Major to the Washington Post. The Pentagon rescue team testimony on 9-11, quote, when we got into the building, we started to feel the heat right away, and as we walked deeper down the hallways, deeper means, and I've confirmed this with many people who work in the Pentagon, deeper means deeper towards the center, towards the courtyard, away from the alleged impact point. Further towards the center, it was just fire everywhere. Not so much smoke there, but fire all around us. You couldn't see the plane, just debris wherever you looked. In the sea ring Now, the sea ring is where the official story says the nose or some heavy part of the plane popped, just barely popped through on the inside of the middle or sea ring But there is good evidence that the that inner sea ring famous exit hole was also made by some kind of explosives, probably shaped charge explosives that were put on the wall. This is uh, one of many photographs that were originally from uh, the Department of Defense that are available on the web. Uh, mechanical engineer Michael Meyer has stated uh, categorically, I'll give you his exact quote in a minute, that a round, clean, so-called, in quotes, exit hole, uh, is like the one seen here, the inside of the sea ring, is the signature of a shaped charge explosive and definitely cannot be, he said it was impossible, from an impact from any kind of plain debris, nose, heavy piece, of it. Meyer spent years in aerospace, structural design, and the design and use of shapes, shaped charge explosives. He quote, it is physically impossible for the C-ring wall, the so-called exit hole, to have failed due to the impact of plane debris of any kind in a clean, neat circle like that. Shaped charge explosive, just so that you know, um, if you do the research on the web uh, or in libraries, they can create a molten jet of plasma that can travel at up to 20,000 feet per second, extremely fast. And there are witnesses, a number of them inside the Pentagon, you can uh, read, uh, you will read their testimonies in my paper, who described an incredibly fast moving, they called it, called it a fireball with a team. Now, the next uh, part of the official story of 9-11 at the Pentagon is, as I mentioned, that there was an oblique or diagonal impact on the outside of the outer wall of the west side. And that that diagonally impacting plane and or parts of it after the first part of the penetration, this is the official story, penetrated through only three of the five rooms. Now, I'm, this is another one of my slides where you don't have the image, but that's okay. Um, because all it does is goes back to the original slide, uh, which showed the impact, the, the approach of the alleged plane uh, into the outside wall of the west side of the Pentagon. And I simply make the point that if a plane or any object, any impactor, would come in at an oblique angle, which the official story says, and goes diagonally through three rings, that you're not going to have a perfectly round exit hole, uh, if it's the front of a fuselage or even a round engine, it would have to impact coming perpendicular to the wall. It would be an oblique type of uh, hole. It wouldn't be perfectly round. That's another uh, argument besides Michael Meyer saying that it is physically impossible. Uh, there is also uh, many uh, witnesses to absence of plane debris outside the C-wing exit hole, despite the official claims. For instance, Terry Mitchell of the Audiovisual Division of ASDPA, quote, I didn't see any evidence of an aircraft yet. Now, this is a slide that um, I will be able to show you. If any of these slides just come up afterwards during the break, and I will show you the actual images on my PowerPoint. And that would be for any of the panelists as well. But what this is simply, it's an, it's an image uh, taken as a screen capture from the American Society of Civil Engineers, ASCE, report. It's called the Building Performance Report, the After Action Report by Engineers on the damage at the Pentagon, how it held up what columns were destroyed, what columns were damaged, etc. And this is simply a graphic uh, of those columns that, from their analysis, going in about three days at least after all the debris was cleared out, so that they could see the columns standing or not, that it's a graphic of where 
the intact columns still work. And uh, one of my colleagues, a uh, former uh, NASA Director of Research Engineering, Dwayne Dietz, did a very simple analysis of this graph, and he showed that there is at least one, if not more than one, intact column in any straight line <coughs> through anywhere near where the alleged entrance hole is and the alleged exit hole. So it's physically impossible for any, any uh, solid object, large and heavy solid object, to have penetrated and made that exit hole. It would have hit at least one of the columns. And besides, the ASCE report itself states that from its own analysis of the evidence of the damage at the Pentagon, that they don't believe that any part of the plane, if it was a plane, uh, survived more than 160 feet in, and the alleged exit hole diagonally now is uh, about 311 feet in. And I would just like to uh, make an aside here. Uh, the uh, Pentagon performance report by the American Society of Civil Engineers has this caveat at the beginning, of the very beginning of the report. Quote, the ASCE makes no representation of any kind concerning the accuracy or completeness of any information contained in this publication. <laughs> Unquote. So, if you still have confidence in anything the Pentagon report says, um, see me afterwards. <laughs> okay, now uh, this, is, uh, this is a very incriminating evidence for the official story. By the way, the official story at the Pentagon can totally collapse on any one of these points, let alone all of them taken together. All right, so we're back to our official story, and in red, um, you see that uh, the official story, of course, says that there is a single exit hole on the inside of the sea ring caused by whatever. Well, in fact, um, this is a graphic taken from the Washington Post immediately after 9-11 from Pentagon sources, DOD sources itself. And uh, when you come up afterwards, you can see the key, if you can't see it there. But there are three exit holes listed from the Pentagon's own immediate sources to the Washington Post after 9-11, not just one. Now we're going to see the image. Luckily, this image survived into my PowerPoint today. This is an aerial photograph uh, that the Pentagon provided uh, to all the media right after 9-11. You can see it on the web. And um, now hopefully my pointer, yes. This is the so-called official exit hole right here. But there are two others that in turn perfectly match these three so-called exit holes from the Pentagon's own release data, and here it says exit holes, plural. And those positions match. So it is impossible for there to have been three C-ring exit holes to have been caused by any kind of an impactor or penetrator, regardless of what it was. Now, eyewitnesses to inside explosions in the outer three rings of the Pentagon. We're going to start with the outside E-ring, which the official story says a plane impact. April Gallup, a very famous witness. I have done a two-hour under oath videotaped interview of April Gallup. In that under oath two-hour sworn statement to me, she states, she states, and I'm summarizing, of course, there were huge explosions the second that she, April Gallup, hit the on button on her computer in the E-ring. She said, I thought it was a bomb. There were two explosions. You saw earlier there was another uh, witness who said there were two, two uh, uh, loud sounds, two explosions. Um, she walked out of the alleged entrance hole, according to the official story, and yet saw no plane, no plane parts, no seats, no passenger, no luggage, no smell of jet fuel, no jet fuel fire, no burns on her body. The only fires she saw were seen coming out of the computers in a large ring around her large army work area. And there was a similar experience uh, reported by Tracy Webb, for instance, in the D-ring, uh, with computers uh, uh, being destroyed. Uh, and April Gallup walked out of the alleged entrance hole, according to the official story, with only one shoe, one bare foot, and the floors were not hot, she said, and her soles, as you will see now, are completely unburned. April Gallup resting, resting on the Pentagon lawn after walking out of the alleged impact hole with one bare foot and her soles completely unburned. Others in her group, let me explain what I mean by that, April Gallup has a group of other survivors of the Army area and close to it whom she meets with. I have not interviewed those people, but I believe